This is the fifth video on first order models and the focus now is going to be on fluid systems. We're going to build on the early videos which looked at mechanical and electrical systems and showed that simple mechanical electrical systems could be modelled using a first order ordinary differential equation. Here we're going to introduce fluid systems comprising tanks and pipes, but nothing too complicated, and show that they too can have similar models and analogous behaviours. Now for simplicity we're going to ignore the changes in momentum due to changes in fluid flow rates because that would make things just a little too complex. Let's look at tanks then. If you had a tank like this, and let's imagine it's full of fluid, so we'll add some fluid in, there it is, it's full of fluid, and we're also going to say it's full to a depth h. Sorry that line's not very straight is it? The question we want to ask is what's the pressure at the bottom of that tank? So if we're down here and we want to know what's the pressure p. Now I'm not going to derive the physics because this is something maybe you've done at school and is standard in the textbooks, but you will see there is this well-known formula. The pressure at the bottom is rho gh. So rho is the density of the fluid, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and h is the depth. So that's a standard um, uh, rule for the pressure at the bottom of um, a tank of fluid of depth h. And clearly as the tank gets deeper or the level of uh, fluid gets deeper the pressure increases. Now a little note. We've actually ignored atmospheric pressure here. In practice you've got P atmosphere here but you've also got P atmosphere everywhere else. So we tend to ignore that because we can consider the pressure as being a differential pressure. What's the pressure difference between the pressure you've got and atmospheric pressure? And you'll see the models work just as effectively. So we're not going to add to that complication of putting P atmospheric all over the place. Just a reminder about pipe flow. There's a number of videos which looked at pipe flow and we said that as long as you don't um, deviate the flow too much, then you can represent the flow rate through a pipe using a simple equation like this. You look at the pressure difference between the two ends, so I've got pressure P1 at this end, pressure P2 at this end, then the flow rate F down the pipe can be written as the difference in pressure equals some constant times the flow rate, where this Kp is essentially a pipe resistance to flow, the resistance being based upon units of pressure. Now, this is good enough for small changes in flow, but you should be aware that if you've got substantial changes in flow, you will probably need a nonlinear model, and that's beyond the remit of these videos. Let's now look at a tank as a storage device. Clearly, when you have a tank, it can store fluid. Depending on the size of the tank, lots of fluid, or perhaps a little bit of fluid. Now, the rate at which the storage is changed is linked to the flow rate into and out of the tank. So if you've got a fast flow rate, the storage changes quickly. A slow flow rate, the storage changes slowly. How much can we store altogether? Well, that depends on the cross-sectional area. Now, for these videos, we'll assume that the cross-sectional area is constant the whole way up. Um, it may be different, but again, that will make the modeling somewhat more tricky and therefore too advanced for these, vol these uh, videos. We need to know about how much fluid is stored altogether, so the stored volume. We might need to know what's the flow in and what's the flow out. So what are the sort of expressions we can get? So here we go. The volume is going to be the cross-sectional area times the depth. That's standard GCSE maths. I presume everybody's happy with that. What about the rate of change of volume? Well, dv dt is going to be the same as a dh dt, because we're assuming that a is constant. And clearly, the rate of change of volume stored with time is flow in minus flow out. So flow has units of meters cubed per second, and obviously dhdt has meters per second, and area has meters squared. Now, what's the key point here? You'll notice there's an analogy with a capacitor. A capacitor stores charge when current flows. Let's look now 
at a more realistic environment. We'll assume we've got a tank with an outflow. You'll see the outflow is marked down here. We've got a flow out. We'll assume this tank has got a depth h. And we want to ask ourselves, can we model this system? All right. And what sort of behaviours will we get? So let's see what happens. I should mark the pressure at the bottom. We'll need that pressure equals rho gh. So I finished my annotation. So what have we got? We've got the volume of the tank is ah. We've got the rate of change of volume with time is adh dt, which must be minus flow out because we've got no f in. That's what we've said, no inflow. We also know, because we've got a pipe down here, that the flow out through the pipe is going to be based upon what's the pressure P1 at this end, what's the pressure P2 at this end, and you're going to look at those differences in pressures, P1 minus P2, and that's going to give you Kp times F out. <coughs> However, we've also noted that P1 minus P2 is going to be rho gh. So I can now put these different things together, and I can write A dh dt equals minus F out, and minus F out is going to be minus rho gh over kp. And I've just about run out of space here, but then for, therefore you can see I've got a dh dt plus rho g over kp into h equals zero. And what you notice, it's a first order differential equation, the same type of model that we've been deriving before. Now let's add, add an inflow. So I'll just finish annotating this. So we've got F out here. We've got a P2 here. We've got a P1 here, which equals rho GH. We've got our flow out. We've marked a flow in. We've got a depth H. And we want to model this system. So the only difference from the previous slide is that we've added a flow in. So if you look at the equations, V equals AH, that's the same. But now, the rate of change of volume with time, or ADH dt, is F in minus F out. Now, F out is given by the same two expressions as the previous slides, so we won't dwell on that one. Let's just write what we end up with. So we've now got ADH dt equals F in minus rho GH over K P. All right, and if I put this together, what you get, you've got A D H D T plus rho G H over K P equals F in. Now, that does look like a first order differential equation, and therefore you might be saying, well, I'm I'm quite happy with this. This seems to be analogous to the types of models that we've got before. However, there is a subtlety. Yes, the model or the system can be modelled using a first order ODE, but the analogy to the earlier electrical systems, which are based on current flow, not fluid flow, are not clean. And why is that? Because here, the input flow was not a pressure. If you look at the equation for a pipe, we said the flow was driven by a pressure difference. So what we expect is the input is a pressure. But we didn't do that. The input we used here was an independent inflow. And if you were to go to an electrical system, that'd be a bit like having a continuous stream of charge being pumped into a capacitor, i.e. a current source. So the input we've used here was a current was equivalent to a current source not a voltage source. And therefore, the analogy is not clean. Yes, we do end up with a first order differential equation, and we can therefore um, get some insights, but it doesn't have a clean analogy with electrical circuits we did earlier. So what we're going to do next is look at systems where maybe the analogy is a lot cleaner and more transparent. Here it is then. What we need is to set the input, the driving thing, as a pressure. So what we've done with this one is we've put a high pressure input 
at the bottom of the tank. And we'll remind you, the pressure at the bottom of the tank is rho g h. The tank's got a depth h, but we've cancelled, you'll see, we've closed the outflow. So what we've got here is an inflow driven by high pressure. And we want to know, essentially, what happens to the tank. So here are the sort of equations that we've used before. A, dH dt, the rate of change of stored uh, fluid with time, and volume of fluid, is F in minus F out. Now we've said that F out is zero, we're going to cancel that. What is the flow in? Well, the flow in is based a bit like a pipe. You'll see there's essentially a pipe down here. So we can use the pipe flow equation to represent the flow through that point. So we've got the difference in pressure between P in and the bottom of the tank, so that's P in minus rho GH, and that's going to be KP1 times F in. You'll see that's simply the pipe equation. So if I put those two together, what do I get? A dH dt equals P in minus rho GH over KP1. And you'll notice this is indeed analogous to the sorts of expressions we had before, but that will be easier to show on the next slide. So what are the analogies with Kirchhoff's voltage law? The voltage supply is analogous to a pressure supply. The volume stored is analogous to charge stored. The flow rate is analogous to current. The tank, because it stores things, is analogous to the capacitor, and the entry pipe is analogous to the resistor. So what we're doing is we're saying this resistor is analogous to a pipe, and this capacitor is analogous to the tank, and this I is analogous to F in. How much flow is actually coming in, and this voltage is analogous to P in. Look at the expressions you've got. So for the tank, we had area times KP1 times dH dt plus rho GH equals P in. So what do you notice? The bit that um, has the derivative over here, okay, um, the rate of change of depth with time is dependent on pipe resistance, pipe resistance being KP1, and obviously it also depends on the area of the tank. The pressure changes with depth, and so actually these two denote the steady state. These two terms tell you where you finish. Okay, you'll finish when P in equals rho GH. Now let's look at the resistor capacitor circuit. And what do you notice? The derivative term here is based upon the resistance, R. So you see same position, pipe, resistor, come in the same position in the equation because they both resist flow. The capacitor stores charge, and you'll see the steady state comes from this part. The 1 over CQ equals V, and the uh, pressure at the bottom of the tank, which links to the capacitance, here, the two appear in analogous positions. So there's a summary of the different analogies that we've got. So a tank system with a high pressure input and no outflow is analogous to a resistor capacitor system or indeed a spring damper system. They have the same types of equations and the components appear in the same positions. But um, this one's slightly more complicated, but you need to be clear that you're basically doing analogy between a pressure input and a voltage, okay? And pipe resistance is not straight away clear because the pipe resistance has got to be multiplied by the area of the tank in order to get this analogy to work with depth H. So analogous components, models and behaviours. Now what happens if we add an outflow? So here we've got our high pressure inflow, P in, but we're also going to allow, allow some of this fluid to escape. What sort of model will we end up with here? Now, I've put the same equations as before. There's nothing new here. A times dH dt equals F in minus F out. F in, we've done, is going to be P in minus rho GH equals KP1 times F in. And earlier, we defined F out. There it was. KP2 times F out equals rho GH. So if I substitute all of those expressions in together, you end up with this. A dH dt, so 
the cross-sectional area times the rate of change of depth of time equals P in minus rho gh over kp1 minus rho gh over kp2. And what's the key thing? We've got a minus term here and a minus term here. So adding this flow out has added this extra minus term. And what's the net impact? I'm not going to analyze it in detail for you, but the net impact is the outlet has the effect of modifying the effective capacitance or storage. So in other words, the steady state depth will be less. For the same pressure input, you will get a smaller steady state depth, and that's simply because the, the outflow will keep letting the water out. Okay, um, So some of the pressure is um, trying to fill up the tank, and some of the pressure is basically driving fluid straight through the outflow. So a summary. We've illustrated the model derivation for simple tank systems with two different types of input. You can have a direct inflow, a bit like a current source, or high pressure input. It's the high pressure input which gives a clean analogy with a series resistor capacitor system. If you had a direct inflow, there isn't a simple analogy with an electrical circuit because a direct inflow is a bit like a current source. If you add an outflow, it creates an analogy with a more complex electrical circuit, which I'm not going to go into. But perhaps you can sit down and work out what the electrical circuit is, which is analogous to having this inflow and this outflow. You might also like to ponder what the equivalent to an inertia element might be, and thus an analogy 